So last time we talked about the Noble Eightfold Path, but just know that Noble Eightfold Path was not the only path that was taught by the Buddha to help us achieve liberation. So Buddha also talked about other paths, and the reason why there are so many different branches and lineages of Buddhism is because they represent different practices and methods that was taught by the Buddha. So in Mahayana Buddhism, we follow the path of Bodhisattva, and Bodhisattva follows the six parameters. So the word parameter in Sanskrit actually means to the other shore, and the six parameters is sometimes being translated as the six perfections. So by practicing these six perfections, it can lead us to the shore of liberation and wisdom, that is enlightenment. So what are the six parameters? So the first is the perfection of giving, the perfection of generosity. So to give generously, to give without expectation, to give without attachment. So in Mahayana Buddhism, in the Bodhisattva path, we don't talk too much about renunciation like that in Theravada Buddhism. However, we talk a lot about giving. By giving away what you have, you kind of renounce your attachment to the material goods, attachment to possessions. So automatically you are renunciating by just practicing giving and the giving is not just limited to material things we can also give say knowledge give wisdom giving dharma and by sharing this to others it will also help to improve your understanding and also you could give emotional support you could give loving kindness to others when others are in distress or are in fear so even being a vegetarian or vegan, it's a kind of giving. Why? Because you are not creating harm to other animals. So by giving generously, by giving without expectation, it also helps us to remove our ego. It helps us to remove our attachment. Because sometimes when we are reluctant to give because we think, oh, this is mine, you know, I should not give away. But actually, the more you give, the more you will gain in return. And you may not know how it works, but if you believe in karma, the more you give, the more you will gain. So we see some people when they were born into this world, they don't seem to have to worry about anything about money. It's most likely that in their previous life, they have practiced this generosity of giving. So in this life, they are blessed in this aspect. Also, we see some people who are very intelligent and wise. It's also likely because they are not reluctant to share their knowledge with others. So really, the more we give, the more we will gain in return. But of course, we're not attached to the fruit. So a bodhisattva, a real bodhisattva, will not even attach to the act of giving and also whether there will be any fruit in return. The bodhisattva simply gives from a place of pure heart. So the next is the profession of morality or the precepts. It is important to uphold the precepts. Uh, so there are five precepts for a lay Buddhist, such as no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no lying, and no alcohol or intoxicants. So the last one, no alcohol or intoxicants, this is to prevent the likelihood that we might commit the first four, because sometimes when we are under the influence of the alcohol, we may commit a lot of wrongful conducts. You know, unless you think you can control your conduct, then just can be relaxed a little bit. But if you know that you can't control it, if you drink, you can't stop, then better don't drink alcohol. And no killing, this is perhaps common sense. And this also includes animals. So no stealing. If we don't want our own things to be stolen by others, it's better we also don't commit stealing. And also no sexual misconduct, which I've talked about before. If you want your relationship to be a harmonious one, you want your partner to be loyal to you, then it's best you don't commit sexual misconduct. And no lying. If you don't want other people to lie to you, if you want to have honest friends, then it's better you don't lie to others. So if we believe in karma, then it's really important that we stick to these precepts. These are not just dogmas or doctrines, but it's really by following the right conduct, it can help us to obtain the good fruit when we can be ready for meditation. Imagine if we commit all this bad conduct and then surely our heart, our mind will not arrive in a peaceful state easily. So that is why it's important for us to follow the precepts 
to do the right things. The next is the profession of forbearance or sometimes called the profession of patience which means that one shall cultivate patience and forbearance no matter what situations we face in life. So we should always be patient and to remain positive regardless of the situations. And the next is the profession of diligence. So this is extremely important for bodhisattvas. You know, the path of awakening is not an easy path. And for bodhisattvas who also strive for helping others to be awakened, one has to work very hard. One needs to be diligent. We need to be diligent in our practice. We can't be lazy. Laziness will not lead us to anywhere. It requires great effort and diligence. So we could make great progression on the path towards awakening and also to help others to get there. And the next profession is the profession of meditation. So by practicing all these professions before, then one can practice meditation and gradually arrive in the meditative state to arrive in the one-pointed focus. And the next profession is the profession of prajna. Oh, I think the Sanskrit pronunciation is pranya, but I'll just stick to the English pronunciation for now, which can be translated as wisdom, but it really goes much beyond the wisdom we commonly understand. So it's the wisdom of shunyata, which means emptiness. One realizes the emptiness of all phenomena, which means one goes beyond the duality. So now in this world, we very much live in duality. We're like, this is right, this is wrong. But for a person who obtained this wisdom of shunyata, one goes beyond the duality. One not only have no attachment, but also one has no separation. So for the Bodhisattva path, the base level of enlightenment is the Arahant non-attachment. But when one realizes the emptiness of all phenomena, also if one goes up to non-attachment and non-separation, to treat everything as it is. So that is the state of enlightenment that the Bodhisattvas strive to achieve. May you be happy and free from suffering. Namo Amitabha Buddha.